Hi guys, my name is Azan. Welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be a book review on Kacha by Arif Adli. Kacha by Arif Adli is basically about a group of friends who consist of six people. Actually, make that five. This sixth person is really unimportant. It's kind of like a tag on to the main five. So these six people is Shira, Shida, Al, Ahmad, Jimmy, and Ajim. So these six people decide to go ghost hunting and they go into an abandoned shopping mall and decided to play Spirit of the Coin or as it's more commonly known, Ouija. And as the cliche goes, shit definitely goes wrong. So um, my feelings for this book is that I hate it. I really, really hate it. But before we move on, I must say this is... This first section is going to be non-spoilers, then I'm gonna move to spoilers because I have a lot of shit to talk about. So like I was saying, I hate this book. It was such a chore for me to finish reading it. I just kept procrastinating on reading it because I didn't want to read it. It just, it just killed, like as Cindy says from Read With Cindy, it killed my last two brain cells, you know? So I, I obviously gave this book a one-star rating on Goodreads and also my blog and... The first, there's a few reasons, but I'll talk about the first reason, which is basically the writing. I did not like the writing. Number one, I didn't like the usage of different POVs. And the reason for this is that when you use this technique of writing, like different uh, points of views, you have to really make the characters' voices individualistic. It has to be distinct from one another, especially if you have five different characters to talk about. I say five because uh, mostly it talks about the main group of friends, which is um, Ajim, Jimmy, Shida, Al, and Amat. Shira is just the cousin to Shida, so she's not really like the main core of the group, by the way. So if you have five different characters you and you're writing with five different POVs, right, each of them must sound really distinct like when the reader reads it right the reader can just immediately know who is talking but when i was reading this i was confused 95 percent of the time because who the fuck is talking right now i am confused i'm so confused because they sound all the same you know and then like halfway through reading i have to flip back a few pages back because i get confused like wait who's talking right now is it one of the guys or like one of the girls so that's definitely strike one the other thing that I do not like about the writing is that there's too much cursing. And this is coming from a person who curses a lot in their life. I feel like the author uses a lot of curses and a lot of cursing just to make the book edgy. And it's like you don't need to, you know? If you're trying to be edgy or like you're trying, you just become tr too try hard, you know? And that's just not cool. I don't like the cursing. There's just too much cursing for no reason. Skit skit siyal. Skit skit kima. I'm just kind of like, okay, I curse too, but like, I can speak normally without cursing 24-7, you know? And then the second thing is I don't like the cringe romance. It's just tacked on for no reason. Like, it didn't have to be there. And this is the romance between, more specifically between Jimmy and Al. Like, there was no build-up, there was no nothing, it just completely came out of left field. Then then suddenly you're like, wait, they're in love for some reason? So, okay, like, sure, whatever. I don't like it, it's cringe. And the second, like, the third thing about the writing that I did not like was, again, it has something to do with trying to be edgy, but it's really not, is the usage of sex. Okay, the usage of sex in this book. And I see that a lot of Buku Fixi books uses sex, but why it's my thought is more of like why use it if it's not needed to be there? If it didn't need to be there, why should it be there? You know? Your book is completely fine. I, I can't remember where I heard this from, but it's from one of the YouTube videos that I watch and it basically says that if um a portion of your book or movie or script or whatever can be taken out and it doesn't affect the story whatsoever you shouldn't put it there because it's, it's just a waste of space you know and I feel like it's correct it's the same thing with all the sex in this book or the insinuation of sex in this book it's just like it didn't need to be there why should it be there you're just I guess you're just trying to be edgy 
but it's not coming off as edgy. It just becomes annoying and too try hard to be edgy, you know? And the sec and then aside from that, what else did I don't like about this book regarding the writing? Oh yes, characters. But this is more like how the characters are written, basically. The characters itself I don't really give a shit because obviously if you write really bad characters, you don't really give a shit about their characterization of said characters. You don't care about them. And my problem with the characters is that they're too reactive in this book. I would like to have characters to be proactive, you know? In this book, it's like shit happens to them and then they react to it. But they don't do anything to change their situation, to try to help themselves, to find out what's going on. Nothing. Until it's like too fucking late. So then you're like, what's the point of even reading this book, you know? And then what else? Um, okay, I already talked about that. Okay, plot-wise. The plot was boring. That's it, really. Again, I think basically my main problem with this book is the writing because as I've listed just now, the plot was boring, which is writing. And it's cliche, by the way. The plot, cliche. And the plot twist was just completely ridiculous. Just completely ridiculous. I cannot even bring it. Aku tak dapat lah weh baca plot twist tu. Buat aku marah je. So, yeah. Hated it. But basically, yeah, like I was saying, most of my problem with this book is just the writing. The characters, I don't like them. Plot, boring. Writing technique, didn't like it. I'm sorry. It's just not a book for me. So now I need to go to spoilers because I really need to, you know, unleash. Ugh, unleash all my feels. Okay. Do you know? Just, ugh. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. One thing that I realized in this book, right? Is how ridiculous it is. I'm not talking about like the gore. I'm not talking about the plot. I'm just talking about the many little loopholes that just doesn't make sense. Okay, so these group of friends, right? They decided to go ghost hunting and just go chill in an abandoned building and play a Ouija board without thinking of the consequences. So obviously one of them can so like, and then um, so after one of them can so again. Like, state sh shit starts to happen lah. They get, like, macam kena kacau and everything. Like, ghosts starts haunting them and shit. So, the first victim... By the way, they start dying off one by one, okay? So, the first victim was Shira. And then, um, the police says that this is how she died is from uh, apparent suicide. And let me tell you how they found her, okay? She was found tied, like, with her feet tied. And then, like, you know, tied somewhere gantong lah somewhere and then her stomach was like slit open and i'm just here like thinking wait a parent suicide who nobody commits suicide that way who on earth would want to commit suicide by slicing their own stomach open do you know how painful that is number one number two that is the most shittiest way to die number three that's painful people go for like the arteries here on your wrists Maybe under the armpit, you know, it's like arteries. Because you bleed out, then you just, you know, you're out. You don't split your stomach open. That doesn't make sense. And then, like, the, I don't even know who the doctor or, like, the police says it was, like, apparent suicide. And I'm, like, thinking, what? Bodoh juga, police to. It's like, this police person seems really stupid because, like, n obviously, it's not apparent suicide. It doesn't even look like a fucking suicide. So you're telling me the police is just going to just take it at face value? Oh, this is a suicide. They're not going to investigate further? Is there no post-mortem in this book? Doctors are not going to say anything? Like, post-mortem doesn't exist in this world or something? I don't get it. Like, what? That makes no sense. That's only one. This is not even the time when Ajim was found dead. You know how he was found dead? Okay, so Ajim obviously is being haunted by this ghost and he starts like puking hair a la the ring, you know? And then when his friends finally found him, they're like, oh shit, Ajim, you're in deep shit now. So they start to like pull the hair again a la the ring and then finally they, they pulled the last one, like the root of the hair from his mouth but then he died and then they brought him to the hospital and then, uh, not really brought him to the hospital, I think they called the ambulance or something and then the ambulance person 
or like the doctor was like oh he died of like heart failure but everything else was like fine and then i'm just here like again is there no post-mortem they just like the family brought the, the dead body back and that was it there was no post-mortem there was no further investigation like the dude died puking hair how is there no post-mortem i don't get it okay i just don't fucking get it <sighs> There's just one and then second it's like like I was saying just now like the characters were or the the writing was trying to be edgy and then it's kind of like There's so much fucking cursing. I just don't get it. Like why why do you have to curse so much? I curse a lot too in my life, but I also know how to like control myself. You don't have to curse all the damn time, you know like, You don't have any other vernacular is it? Vocabulary in your vernacular, I can't even speak straight because of this book. Pissed me off so much. And then it's like another thing that I didn't like that I think the author was trying, again, trying to be edgy, was like I said in my non spoilers, was the usage of sex, right? In this book, the guys were checking out the girls, right? Like saying, oh, like Al has nice boobs, maybe it's a B cup, or like Shira has a nice body, oh, so hot, or like shit like that if if that was just like both guys and girls do it then it's completely fine i don't mind and this is not about equality it's just like it just shows it's fair you know if a guy can look at a girl and see she's hot obviously a girl can do the same and it's like but here it just seems like he, the author is just putting in sexual stuff just for the fuck of it you know it doesn't it didn't even need to be there like Okay, you bring back, you say that Al has B cup boobs, and then what? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to touch her boobs or something? It's just like, is. it was just stated there, and then nothing was done. So what's the point? And that's not even the worst part. There's this one section in the book. So um, Jimmy was being haunted by a group of uh, ghost kids, right? So when Shira died, they went for the, her, her funeral and then they baca Yasin because obviously everybody's Muslim here. And then suddenly he got up and then he goes to back to the abandoned building, right? Abandoned shopping mall, abandoned building. And there is a lake behind that building. He jumps into the lake and then he brings out like a bag of a bag full of children's bones. And then you think like, oh shit, this this has to to do with the whole with the overarching plot, you know? It will it be a mystery that somebody killed these kids? Like, what's going to happen? But in the end, nothing happens, you know? He just found the bag of bones. He calls the cops, and again, is there no further investigation around here? The dude just found a bag of full of bones. Ah! Uh! Isn't the cops stupid or something? I don't understand. It's just like, is nobody going to question? Is there no like other questions like further up investigation? Something. So, yeah. He found the bag of bones and then that's it. It had nothing. It had zero to do with the overarching plot. So then I am thinking, why the hell did you put that part or that subplot in this book why it's like you put that subplot in that book but it has nothing to do with the overarching plot so then why is it in there in the first place i just don't get it <gasps> my god there's not even the ones that i said in my non-spoiler review of like the romance between jimmy and al okay this, it was split to two. There was a prologue two years ago about these five friends. And in that prologue of two years ago, Jimmy and Al, they played Truth or Dare and they made out, right? And then flash forward to the present day two years later, um, it, there's no indication that Jimmy is in love with Al, right? Nothing was said. When they meet, there is nothing even said in his own monologue or in his own... Uh, POV that he seems interested in Al. It it seems like he was more interested with Shira, you know? And then suddenly you tell me, 
out of nowhere after they start being haunted by these ghosts suddenly he's like oh my god i finally have a revelation that i am actually in love with l all this while and i'm just kind of like wait what where did that come from Okay, so like I was saying, it didn't make sense, the whole romance between Jimmy and Al. Like, it wasn't explained, it wasn't written, it wasn't shown in his POV, it wasn't shown in the book. Except maybe like after halfway through the book. So it just makes it really jarring that suddenly he, he realized he has loved her for these two years. It just makes you think, okay, so you didn't realize before this or like like what's going on you know i just wish it was written well so it wouldn't come off as cringy and again i have to turn back to the writing aspect of this book because there's this one situation where um jimmy after he um like being disturbed or haunted by these ghost kids he just went missing for a week like completely mia nobody knows where he is even he himself doesn't know where he is, like what he did, where he went. One week was completely unaccounted for. I just call it him hibernating. And then it's like the writer puts it in, but then never brings it up again, never explains why he went missing for a week. Where did he go? It was not explained. It just makes me really angry because then why did you put it in if you're just not going to explain it? Like the whole bag of bones thing. Why put it in? That, that Jimmy went into the lake and swam in the middle of the lake, go into the lake, and then got a bag of bones of kids. And then it just wasn't brought up again, wasn't explained. Did the kids die? What did the kids have to do with the overall plot? Nobody knows. Even I don't know. I'm pretty sure even the author doesn't know. So I'm just kind of like, why? Why put it in if nothing was going to come out of it? And then another thing that I just didn't get was, is nobody working in this book? Like, there's six characters, right? Obviously, she is already out. She's dead. So there's five characters left. Are none of them working? Because they seem to be gallivanting about being haunted by ghosts, going to Johor Bahru, going to Suramban. I don't know how big this is. I'm Sarawakian, so... You know, I'm bad with geography, but it's like, they seem to be gallivanting about, like, going everywhere willy-nilly. Sekejap-sekejap lepak kat cyber, sekejap-sekejap lepak here, lepak there, this kede mama. And I'm just kind of like, is nobody working? Like, the only time I ever seen Jimmy go to work was once, like, earlier in the book. And that was it. It was like, uh, he was going to get promoted. And then I'm just kind of like, yeah, man. Your bosses sure seem to be really, 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 I don't know, free about this type of thing, you know, about them not going to work. I'm not even sure the timeline of it. If they did go to work, right, then I have to say the timeline of this story is really bad, or at least it's written to be really bad because I'm just confused. Are they not working is nobody going to call their bosses? At least call the boss, like, say, oh, I can't come to work today because I'm sick. You don't need to say that you're trying to find your possessed friend who now is acting like a dog because I don't think your boss would even want to know what to do. I don't, like, you know. And another thing that I need to complain about, I can't even speak well, is how stupid these characters are. I, ha- I really just have to put it out there. Because, okay, okay, one week, right? One week, Jimmy was unaccounted for. He couldn't be found by his friends. But that same week, Afik was also unaccounted for, right? Nobody has seen Afik. That's the friend. Actually, they are six friends. It's Afik. I completely forgot about him. Anyways, so, yeah, six friends. Plus Shira, seven. So, yeah, um, Afik was unaccounted for. And then when finally they got to Jimmy and then they finally, like, um, got to talk to him. Every- and then from, like, the point where they got to meet Jimmy after his hibernation towards the end of the book, or almost the end of the book, they just keep saying, oh, my God, I'm so worried about Afik. I'm so worried about Afik. I hope he's okay. I hope he's okay. But nobody wants to call the cops. 
Nobody wants to try and find his parents. Nobody tries to call his workplace. Nothing. They just keep saying, oh, I'm so worried about Afiq. I'm so worried about Afiq. I'm like thinking, dude, you haven't seen the man in over a week. Go to the cops. They can't do much, but at least they can do something. At least you're doing something. Which is why I see all these characters in this book, they are reactive. They are not proactive. Which I hate because it just makes them seem so stupid. Just so, I just can't with it. I'm just, I'm losing my steam because I'm so angry that I'm just losing it. I'm just, uh. so another one is, what else do I need to talk about? Oh, yes. Can there be uh, haunted by these ghosts? But they keep like second guessing themselves. It's like, oh, am I really gonna catch on to? Am I really being haunted by ghosts? It can't be real. It can't be real. I'm like, dude, it's over a week. Get over it. It's real, you know? And again, this is why I say these characters are reactive. If it was me, right, I would go and find any bomo, any ustas, ustaza. Heck, even just buka my Spotify. Just to put some rukya, some doa doa, some Quran, like sayings or whatever on, you know, like something. Nita. Sikit-sikit je, oh, tak mungkin. Ni tak mungkin berlaku. Sikit-sikit tak mungkin berlaku. And we're already halfway through the book, by the way. Tak mungkin berlaku, tak mungkin berlaku. Ketampa, kan? Ay, stress aku. Stress. Betul-betul stress. And then it's only two, like one section towards the end. Finally, Jimmy remem- remembers God. It's like, finally he prays. And I'm like... Oh, finally, you want to pray. Now, you remember God. Throughout the whole book, you didn't even remember God once. Tak ada bismillah, tak ada Allahu Akbar ke apa. I'm just kind of like, just seems really stupid. If they were the type to be really, what is that word? I forgot. You know the Dorian Gray book? There's a word for it. Heteronormative? No, that's not it. I can't remember. Hedonistic. Hedonistic. If they were really living the hedonistic lifestyle, there is no God, then that's fine. But it didn't seem like they were living this hedonistic lifestyle of like, oh yeah, we're living in the now, you know? They just seem like normal people. Normal people would go and find an ustas, find somebody to help them. And not just be like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? And another thing that really... I oh, mean, there's so many things that annoys me about this book. So another thing was that they never go into these things with a plan. Okay, so at this rate, Shira has been possessed and is now acting like a rabid dog. Amat and Jimmy just got out of the hospital because uh, when they first confronted Shida, right, uh, Shida attacked them and Jimmy hit his head and has a concussion. And then Al was obviously dumbstruck. It's like, what the fuck's going on? So then they go back to Shida's place to find Shida. And then instead of, I don't know, bringing a rope, bringing torchlight, bringing backup, calling the cops, maybe, bringing an ustas, bringing, I don't know, a Spotify or like a Quran or something. They just go in there trying to find Shida, who by now, which also they know she is possessed right she is possessed they just go there with no plan no nothing and then is completely shocked that they can't control her and i'm just kind of like no you don't get to be shocked it's because you're stupid okay you're stupid just so just, so annoying i'm just i just cannot don't even that's not i'm not even talking about the plot twist yet the plot twist punya lah bodoh bodoh betul plot twist tu I don't know if it's because I'm East Malaysian I'm Sarawakian and the characters of the book are West Malaysians I don't know if it's because us we East Malaysians still believe in black magic and those shit easily I suppose as opposed to West Malaysians I'm not sure I'm just saying the plot twist is this right the night before um what do you call it, they were going to go ghost hunting, Afik thought it was such a good idea to go to that building and call upon a djinn or like a pontiana or something, which is a, a kind of ghost. And he managed to call upon it, right? And all he asks from this entity is that he just wants this entity to show itself when they're doing the ghost hunting. 
So this entity asks, okay, I'll do it, but we need to have a, an, an agreement. So the agreement was that she's going to show herself, but he has to uh, free herself and her, her gang, I guess, her gang from this one place. And then the, the agreement is that if the promise is broken, she gets to get half of their lives, meaning him and his friend's lives, right? So Afik, being the smartass that he was, is like, oh, we will never break the promise. We will never break it. Because the promise was that she wants to have one host body, right? One host body. So that was it. It's like, she, like, um, it, she, it, I don't know, the entity, I suppose, um, agrees to show herself and then the other promise was that she was going to get a host body. And if the promise is broken, um, she will obviously wreak havoc and basically ask for blood. And Afik is like, oh, we will never, we will never break the promise. So I'm so confident about this. Let's just do it. And he did it. Shook hands, made the deal with the devil. And I'm just kind of, you made the deal with the devil. Just so, basically, the devil can just show itself on your stupid ghost hunting shit. That is it. You didn't ask for other things. Like, I don't know, money. Toto number or something. Getting the girl of your dreams. Something more significant than just showing up for this stupid ass ghost hunting shit. Do you know how stupid that plot is? That plot twist is? It's like when... When I'm reading it, I'm just kind of like, really? Really? You sacrificed. You you bartered, basically. You bartered your life, your friend's life, just so you can have a bit of thrill for your, like, ghost hunting. That, that, that was it. I can't with this book. I cannot. I just... That's all I can say. It's just, I cannot. There's just so many things wrong with this book. And I'm just, ugh. It's just so frustrating reading it. I just don't get it. Nothing makes sense with this book. Is it me? Is it me? I don't know. But after reading two books by this author, I have just come to realize that this author is just not for me. I'm not going to read any more books by this author. I just cannot, I cannot bring to, can't torture myself anymore. So, yeah. That's it. This is my review. I'm sorry it's all over the place. I'm just, I'm just disappointed because I felt like this book lied to me. I chose this book specifically because on Goodreads, it was like four and a half. And everybody raved about this book, just completely raved about it, saying how scary it was, saying how creepy it was, saying how the plot was amazeballs. I read it, and I'm like, the plot is boring, the plot is dull, it's not creepy at all. It's like, what are you talking about? It's like the the section in Nadia Han's book, Gantong, about the ghost thing was creepier. That one creeped the shit out of me. This book is just like, uh... No. Yeah, I guess I'm done with my review. Hope you like it. If you didn't, whatever. You like what you like. Okay, bye.